This video is intended to highlight the most critical steps of the technical instructions for safety recall ALE on Lexus IS350 and GS350 and 450H models. Only some of the steps for this repair will be shown. Be careful when performing this procedure. If steps are overlooked or performed incorrectly, additional repairs may be necessary, affecting the customer's perception on the quality of the repair. Refer to the technical instructions for steps not shown in this video, as well as additional information. After removing the valve covers, the spark plug tubes and oil galleys should be plugged with shop towels. The spark plug tubes are marked in yellow and the oil galleys are marked in red. This will prevent foreign objects from entering the engine. Be sure to remove the shop towels prior to reinstalling the valve covers. Before disassembling valve train components, it is necessary to properly align the crankshaft and the camshafts to ensure correct engine timing during reassembly. Begin by rotating the crankshaft pulley so cylinder 1 is at top dead center. When the pulley notch is aligned with the third hash mark, cylinder 1 is at top dead center. Confirm the timing marks on the VVT gears are facing up. If you cannot see the marks, rotate the crankshaft 360 degrees. When viewing the timing marks, it is necessary to look at them from the correct angle. Notice the technician's position when verifying the intake camshaft timing marks compared to the exhaust camshaft timing marks. Viewing the marks at the wrong angle may make them seem improperly aligned. The intake camshaft should be viewed at somewhat of an overhead angle. When viewing the exhaust cam at this angle, it will appear to be misaligned. The exhaust camshaft needs to be viewed at a lower angle that is more direct and from the side of the vehicle. Viewing the intake cam at this position will make it seem misaligned. Using a paint marker, mark the chain, VVT gears, and bearing cap to assist with alignment during reassembly. Remove the primary chain tensioner as described in the technical instructions. With the tensioner removed, use the hexagonal portion of the intake camshaft and carefully rotate it until valve spring pressure releases. Caution, the camshafts may spin quickly. If this step is skipped, the valve train will rapidly rotate due to valve spring pressure. This can cause the chain to bind. Next, rotate the crankshaft until the flat surface of the exhaust gear is facing the intake gear. This will allow space for chain removal. Then, lift the chain off the gear and hang it on the VVT actuator. Warning! Before removing the bearing caps, confirm that the lobes are not depressing the valves. If the spring pressure is not reduced, the bearing caps can break. Use caution when performing the following steps. If not done properly, the FIPG seal between the camshaft housing and the cylinder head will crack, causing future oil leaks. When removing the camshaft bearing caps, use the proper sequence as described in the technical instructions. Loosen the bolts to each cap in several increments, beginning with the black bolts. Do not use air tools. If this step is not done properly, the bearing cap may break. 
As each cap is removed, it is necessary to install a hold-down bolt to prevent damage to the seal. The hold-down bolts and washers will be included in the V6 Special Service Toolkit that will be sent to your dealership. Install the provided hold-down bolt with two washers. The washers are used to prevent damage to the dowel pins. After the bearing caps have all been removed, remove the secondary chain tensioner. With the help of another technician, have one person hold the tension on the crankshaft chain while the other lifts the camshafts from the engine. While holding tension on the timing chain, tightly secure it to ensure proper engine timing during reassembly. If the chain is not secure, it may become trapped or skip teeth. Next, Repeat the camshaft removal procedure for the left-hand bank. Once the camshafts have been removed, the rocker arms, stem caps, and lash adjusters must be removed. Use a strong magnet to remove these parts. New rocker arms and stem caps are not included in the parts kit. It is important to keep these parts well organized because they must be installed on the same valve from which they were removed. Next, the cylinders need to be pressurized with a provided special service tool. Perform this four-step check to ensure the tool is working properly. First, close the valve at the regulator and set the pressure to the specified value. Check for air leaks. Confirm air adapter O-rings are installed and in good condition. Attach the air adapters and supply air to the adapters to remove any debris. With cylinder 1 at top dead center and the regulator valve closed, remove the shop towels from the spark plug holes. Hand tighten the air adapters Slowly open the regulator valve. Check for air leaks and repair the leaks before proceeding. A hissing sound from small leaks will exist. This condition is normal. Follow these basic rules when replacing the valves. Before removing valve springs from a cylinder, raise the piston in that cylinder. This will prevent a valve from completely dropping into the cylinder if shop air pressure is lost. As the engine is rotated, keep tension on the timing chain. The V6 tool kit will include a tool for valve spring removal and one for installation. Be sure to use the correct tool for the step you're working on. Always wear protective eyewear when working with valve spring removal and installation. With the valve component removal tool, compress the valve spring. The magnets in the tool will capture the keepers and retainer. Remove and mark the valve spring to ensure it is not reinstalled. Before installing the new valve spring, ensure the valve spring seat is still in place. Then, install the new valve spring. Once the valve spring has been replaced, the retainers and keepers must be reinstalled. Place the retainer in your hand, facing up. Install the keepers into the retainer and attach them to the provided installation tool. Ensure the spring-loaded guide shaft is fully extended or the retainer and keepers will fall off. When the guide shaft is fully extended, it will protrude past the retainer. With the valve spring installation tool, compress the valve spring. Once the spring is sufficiently compressed, the retainer and keepers will be installed on the valve. It is crucial 
that the installation tool is pressed straight down and in line with the valve stem. If the keepers are not at an even height around the valve stem and fit tightly in the retainer, they are not installed correctly. Do not force the keeper into place with the valve keeper seat tool. Remove the parts and repeat the installation process using the valve spring installation tool. The keepers should be recessed into the retainer and at an even level around the valve stem. Repeat these steps for all valves in the cylinder. Place the valve keeper seat tool on the keepers. Lightly tap the tool a few times. After removing the tool, visually inspect the installation of the keepers. After finishing all the valves for one cylinder, rotate the crank to raise the piston in the next cylinder to be repaired. To find top dead center, it is necessary to remove air pressure from all cylinders and the air adapter from the next cylinder. Insert a long quarter inch extension into the cylinder through the spark plug hole to measure the depth of the piston. Rotate the crank until the extension stops rising. Reconnect the air adapter and air supply line. Then open the valve to supply air to the cylinders. Repeat the steps for valve spring replacement on this cylinder. Perform this procedure on all of the remaining cylinders. Once all the valve springs have been replaced, the new lash adjusters must be installed. Before installation, the air must be bled from the lash adjusters. Locate the SST required for this step. Submerge the lash adjuster in clean engine oil and insert the tool straight into the lash adjuster. It is critical that the SST is properly inserted to depress the check ball in the lash adjuster. While submerged, hold the tool and lash adjuster vertically. If it is not held vertically, it will not bleed properly. Pump the SST at least six times. Remove the tool and firmly push the lash adjuster to check that the plunger barely moves. Resubmerge the lash adjuster to fill the low pressure side. Repeat these steps for each lash adjuster. If there is more than slight movement, the air has not been completely removed. Repeat the bleeding procedure. Insert and twist the lash adjuster for proper installation. After all lash adjusters have been installed, the stem caps should be reinstalled. When installing the rocker arms, it is helpful to put engine assembly lube on the rocker arm to hold it in place on the valve stem and lash adjuster. It is critical that rocker arms are properly seated when the camshafts are reinstalled. When installed correctly, the valve stem and lash adjuster should fit into recesses in the bottom of the rocker arm. If the rocker is incorrectly installed, it will not fit evenly across the lash adjuster and valve stem. Installing the camshaft with this condition will lead to poor performance and engine damage. Once the camshafts and bearing caps have been reinstalled, confirm all rocker arms are in the correct position. A consistent U-shaped distance should be seen on all rocker arms. The procedure for valve spring replacement is similar for both the left hand and right hand engine banks. Once the camshafts have been reinstalled,
confirm the engine has been correctly timed. Rotate the crankshaft 720 degrees to top dead center. Pay close attention for any binding or abnormalities. If the engine does not rotate smoothly, diagnose and repair before completing reassembly steps. Check the timing marks on the camshaft gear and camshaft cap. This step will confirm the engine has been correctly timed. Verify the timing marks are still perfectly aligned. Repeat the timing procedure if the marks do not align. Please note the painted markings on the chain will not realign after the engine has been rotated. Refer to technical instructions for specific reassembly procedures. Remember to use the new components included in the specified parts kit.